respect in his laws of the universe. Mm -hmm. He explained in probably the best way that I've ever heard anyone explain, barring Lao Tzu perhaps. Mm -hmm. But Lao Tzu's is also theoretical when he comes to the Tao because he says you can only experience the yin and the yang and the other is beyond the perception of words. And so there are loads of reality that governs the whole of nature. He says you can't deal with it or you can't, um, you, can, uh, you can't imprison it, you can't contain it, it slips through your fingers, all those things. He's absolutely right because that's the nature of consciousness. The more you try to contain consciousness, the more you limit yourself. So I see what the church has done is put a limit on everything, God included, mm -hmm. and tried to contain God so the priesthood could have power. And so they got everyone to confess their sins so they could control the local population mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. know what everybody's doing, tell everybody what to do, and get into the act to intervening and claiming that they had the power to be for Christ, to have a direct link with Christ, who would then link you up with God. Well, Jesus never That's said any of that. An organization. Jesus said you don't need the priests. You need a right. direct relationship with sure, God, sure. and that's the only real knowledge you will ever have. But Christ referred to God as his Father, as far as we know. Because that was a Jewish concept, in a sense. Yeah. The male dominance of society required him to speak in the language that the people were yeah, would understand yeah, 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 yeah. it. Yeah. If he said mother, they wouldn't understand So do you think that was just a, a cultural... Um, it's something handed uh, down as we, you know, that he, don't forget that he came into a society that had a hundred years of the teachings of King David. And David was origin was a thousand years after Moses. So everybody knew all the answers by the time he came. <laughs> yeah. see, so you they didn't were have to have, you went to a rabbi, he'd tell you the stock answer. And he's, his way was saying that's not worth anything because it's just teaching the form of religion and not the spirit of the law. So his spirit of the law is all uh, enshrined in the Lord's Prayer, if you understand the Lord's Prayer, but most people don't. See, if they knew the original language he spoke, the Aramaic, and hear him say the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic, it would sound totally different. Do you know what the distinctions are between it in Aramaic and in Hebrew? Yeah, well, for English, instance, we say matter. his teaching was basically uh, surrendered to God's will, or we, in the Lord's Prayer, it's like... Um, uh, as it is in heaven, so it is on earth, and by... That sounds positively alchemical. Yeah, it is. Uh, he said it, as in universe, so on earth. That's the way yeah. it comes across. That we talk about heaven and earth and uh, in ways that are different to the universal consciousness that he was expressing. And he... Uh, I think gave us the laws uh, about how to live in, the, in that, but to get the essence out of them is very difficult, and you can't get it through religion. It's you can only get it through direct practice of what he said. Most people think the Sermon on the Mount is far too difficult and unrealistic, because they say, well, you've got to let the guy slap the other cheek. This is not what he's talking about. That's a, that's a metaphor for being yielding and bringing the goddess way of peace and beauty and try and get the change that way even with someone who's angry with you and is willing to hit you he said you'll not get any further by hitting back or reacting it's challenging the he's saying Old you'll only get somewhere when you an eye for an eye well, yeah when you realize that it's not energy efficient to create a war even if the other guy wants war you know, to that. soften the vibrations and try and channel the anger and use it maybe or sure. go in the way with him and settle. Do you know the uh, quote of Zero Mustel from Fiddler on the Roof in conjunction with this idea? He said that if we really lived by the idea of the Old Testament of an eye for an eye and a mm. tooth for a tooth, we would have a world full of eyeless, toothless people. That's right, we would. <laughs> well, that's what we got, a lot of those. <laughs> we do. <laughs> a lot without heads in Bosnia. <laughs> eyeless, toothless, and headless, <laughs> not to mention heartless. <laughs> We're doing something about that, folks. In fact, maybe we ought to introduce you at this point. <laughs> okay. We are speaking, and then we'll pick up where we left off. Uh, we're speaking with Christopher Hills today on A Better World uh, with your host, Mitchell J. Rabin, and welcome. Glad that you're with us. 
Dr. Hills is a very interesting man, as you have already begun to witness. He's the author of some 27 books, and uh, it would take too long to even name them all right now. He is a true uh, revolutionary, iconoclastic, original thinker, and uh, has his thoughts and philosophy have, sp have spanned many, many different fields, from food to economics to how to live in this world in a most creative and uh, fulfilled way. Some of the books that he has written are Dr. Hill's Brain Recharging System, Creative Conflict, Creative Imagination, Everything is Now, Exploring Inner Space. It goes on and on. I'm going to bring you right up to date and just show you the last book that Dr. Hills has written called The Book of Vision. And this is generally available as it comes into focus. Voila. In bookstores across the country, Christopher? No, it's only just printed. This is practically the first copy. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> because I only just grabbed them as they came out. And ah, came from the yes. Yes. Well, I'm honored to hold it. <laughs> uh, will it be available, however, in uh, bookstores uh, across the country? This is a vision of a certain company I formed to feed the hungry many years ago and ship spirulina. We brought it to this country and yes. in Japan mm -hmm. as food. And I thought, uh, for 15 years I studied it as an answer to the hungry and put the factories in the different countries. And mm -hmm. So this is a book about the vision of that company and how it can change ourselves by not only eating the products uh, of nutrition, which mm -hmm. are advanced products, yes.